thank you everybody for, for coming today. Um, and I would like, and Paul Lewis, I would like to welcome all of you. Um, and as most of you know, 2010 marks the 100th anniversary of the Boy Scouts of America. To help local councils discover and tell the story of how scouting empowers individuals to make important and meaningful differences in the lives of others, 100th anniversary National Hall of Leadership has been established by the National Office. This year marks a, a one-time opportunity to honor and recognize scouts, leaders, and any living person who has served as a scouting volunteer for an ex and making extraordinary differences they have made in the lives of others through their leadership. The recognition is not based on tenure, previous honors received, or positions held. Anyone could submit a nomination to the national office through a link from the Boy Scouts of America website. The nominations were then returned to the local council. Each council could submit 10 names to serve as finalists. A national committee selected a winner from the list of finalists provided by each council with approximately 300 councils nationally. To recognize all of the nominees from the Northeast Iowa Council, I would like to invite Dustin Ferris, our Scout Executive, to join me in recognizing the Hall of Fame nominees from the Northeast Iowa Council. Please come forward as you are called. These are our Northeast Iowa Council nominees. Steve Arlen, Dick Elliott. Tom Faulkner. Jim Neumeister. Bob Peters. <laughs> Doug Star Jr. Also nominated, but not present today, were Ron Burkhart, Zach Chapman, Dick Heller, and Albert Rittery. Please help me congratulate the nominees. I would now like to invite Tim Riedel, the Eagle Scout from Troop 48, to the podium.
Good to see everyone here in recognition of this rally today. This is, this is amazing to see all these people, all these faces from all these years. And uh, I'd first like to say that's an honor and privilege for me to be able to stand here and uh, here today present an award, but more importantly, recognize the unselfish and passionate years Dick Elliott has devoted to the youth and the Boy Scouts of America. But uh, one thing, I can't do this alone. So I'd like to ask all the Eagle Scouts of Troop 48 and Troop 32 to please come up here and join me on stage in helping me to uh, deservedly recognize this man for his achievements. standard, the building of a personality beyond its normal limitations. You know, Mr. Reed, not all of your scouts obtained the rank of Eagle Scout, but that doesn't mean they all weren't held to a higher standard, encouraged to be better than they thought possible, or ultimately grew in every way under your leadership, tutelage, and guidance. These impacts were crystallized by learned life lessons that will stick with them forever. And Mr. Reed, all of your scouts, us included, our personalities and character were developed beyond our normal limitations. Many of us have been lined up at the beginning of a scout meeting for inspection. Uh, you would make sure our shirts were tucked in, our neck and cheeks were straight, uh, we were clean shaven, given circumstances, and even our fingernails would be well groomed. Mr. Reed, you did this because you believed in the higher standard of manhood that the Boy Scouts represented and strived to develop. You yourself epitomized these ideals and led by them. You know, these men behind us, and many more just like them, have been molded by your wisdom and experience through a series of weekly meetings in the church basement, monthly camping trips with temperatures and elements ranging from pleasant to abominable, <laughs> and uh, extended periods away from home on week-long summer camp trips and 10 to 14 day long high adventure experiences. You now each one of us has our stories to tell, and Mr. Riley, one of the unique reasons why we have all these stories is because you gave us all individual, undivided attention. You would make us feel special, wanted, and give us confidence in our abilities beginning with the first time we walked through that door in the back of the church basement. On camping trips and scout meetings, you would find teachable moments all the time. And just today I saw you in the back with one of the scouts going over his uh, scout law. <laughs> Now, there are always situations to learn something new. 
even if we, the scouts, wanted to throw a football around instead. He would always bring us back, teach us how to place wood on the fire, cook even with smoke in our faces, tie knots, and learn how to better use a compass and a map together. And who could forget your seven P's of being prepared? Proper prior planning prevents pitifully poor performance. <laughs> When any of the scouts would forget a piece of candy equipment or be cold at night, we always knew we could turn to you and you'd pull an extra sleeping bag, or a pair of rubber galoshes, or an extra pair of wool socks out of your truck. You know, you always had our backs, especially in the most miserable of times. And your attitude and your preparedness made those times less miserable and sometimes comfortable. You know, we knew we were not alone. I can, almost, I can also remember having conversations with you, not about scouting, but about life. And I'm very certain you've had similar conversations with all of your Eagle Scouts over the years. You know, you'd always be interested in how school was going, uh, how my, what my hobbies were, and the like. And uh, you loved catching up with us on how our lives were going and the directions we've taken. And that's because you cared, and you took a lot of pride in us as individuals. Well, today, Mr. Reed, we're very proud of you. Uh, you remember teach me the boot knot in Colorado where it went out there in 2001? Uh, I can't tell you how many people I've taught that knot to from all over the country. And uh, it's these little anecdotes and examples of the way you've impacted us made our scouting experiences more exciting and enriched our lives. Now, those experiences go on and on. Now, Mr. Elliott, the message is simple. On behalf of the men standing here behind me, and all of those who couldn't be here today, we want to say thank you. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for caring. Thank you for being there for all of us during our time of scouting and after. Each one of us who have gone through the troop will never will have or have had opportunities to do great things with the experiences you've shared with us. Your great legacy is almost unimaginable. The people you have impacted through us is a real reward. In more cases than not, you'll never know how many you've touched and to what extent, but that's the magic of unselfish dedication to you over a lot of years. That's the essence of leadership. Thank you again, Mr. Elliott, for lifting our visions, raising our performance, and building our personalities. Now, on behalf of the Scouts and Scouters of 248 and Northeast Iowa Council, I would like to recognize Dick Elliott on his induction into the Boy Scouts of America's National Hall of Leadership. We have a plaque. Can you guys stand there? We have a plaque from the National Office. And it reads, In recognition of your outstanding leadership and dedication in bringing to light the Scouts of Law, the Boy Scouts of America is proud to include you in the BSA 100th Anniversary National Hall of Leadership. You are among a select group of individuals so honored during Scouting Centennial Year for the extraordinary difference you have made in the lives of others through your leadership. The Boy Scouts of America hereby thanks you for your unselfish commitment to serve as a true example of why Scouting is as vital and relevant today as when our journey began. Please help me in congratulating Dick Elliott on his induction to the National Hall of Leadership. Committee, 
to represent the Northeast Iowa Council, some local scouters asked what could be done locally to express their appreciation for the contributions that Dick has made. Over 50 friends, family members, scouts, and scout leaders have taken the opportunity to not only sign a congratulations card with their name on it, but to write in their own words their gratitude for a lifetime of service. Andrew has a collection of letters that attempt to say not only congratulations, but thank you for what you have meant to themselves and to their family.
I would encourage you to take time to read some heartfelt thanks and gratitude uh, expressed to Dick on behalf of those that know him well. There's also, if you didn't get a chance to write a letter or if you'd like to write another note, there's cards on your table. You can take a moment, write in the cards, drop it off at the basket and the round table in the back. And there's also, we would also like to have you um, sign in the guest register so that we can give that to Dick and have that as a memento for him as well. Again, thank you very much. And now please, please form a reception right over in the light. And thank you.